an unborn child. Today, such pictures are commonplace, but in the past, they would have been a breathtaking sensation. Leonardo da Vinci was a universal genius. In the early 16th century, he drew the different stages in human development. His anatomical sketches are not only outstanding works of art, for the first time they provided an accurate insight into the nature of man. In Leonardo, an interest in science went hand in hand with an exceptional gift for art, a unique stroke of fortune for both fields. He was one of the first artists to dissect corpses. Leonardo applied the knowledge he gained to his painting in order to perfect his representation technique and the expressiveness of his works. Through his anatomical studies, he strove first and foremost to comprehend and portray man in all his proportions and as an organic unit. Leonardo da Vinci was born in a village in Tuscany on April the 15th, 1542. The illegitimate son of Caterina, a peasant girl, and Ser Piero, a notary. He displayed an exceptional gift for art even as a boy. In 1469, Leonardo and his father moved to Florence where he spent the next 12 years as apprentice and assistant to the renowned painter and sculptor Andrea del Verrocchio. Verrocchio's painting, The Baptism of Christ, provided initial proof of Leonardo's outstanding artistic ability. The angel on the left is his work. After completing his apprenticeship, Leonardo focused on an important innovation in painting, the use of perspective. He compared the perspective portrayal of a body with its true proportions. His interest in science, especially geometry, was aroused. Leonardo was a researcher through and through. The urge to identify and portray reality was so overpowering that he was not content with just one field of science. Sometimes he was a geologist, at others a civil engineer, botanist or even a military engineer. Above all though, he was an anatomist. He documented the results of his research in hundreds of drawings. What he was unable to draw, he recorded meticulously in words. Leonardo, who was left-handed, wrote in reverse all his life. The first object of his anatomical research was the human head. Leonardo carefully prepared several skulls, which he then drew from different angles. he was particularly fascinated by the eye. He traced the paths of the optic nerves and found the spot in the brain where they cross. He called it the senso commune, suspecting it was the site of the soul. Today, this area is known to contain the third cerebral ventricle and the hypothalamus, the control center for the body's main functions. Leonardo's interest in anatomy was awakened he turned to specialized literature on the subject, but found there was very little, because for a long time, dissecting corpses was regarded as a sin. 
The Greek physician, Claudius Galen, who lived in Alexandria in the second century AD, is regarded as one of the founders of human anatomy. Since he wasn't allowed to dissect corpses, he dismembered apes and bears and applied his findings to the human body. Galen's anatomical works went unchallenged for hundreds of years. In 1483, Leonardo interrupted his anatomical research to enter the service of the Duke of Milan. In addition to fortresses, he designed weapons and an equestrian statue, the Great Horse, which was never completed. He also planned and built canals and locks, some of which have been preserved through to the present day. In 1499, French troops occupied Milan and Leonardo lost his position. He returned to Florence. Facing financial problems, he accepted a commission to paint a young Florentine woman. Leonardo spent two years working on the portrait of the Mona Lisa. He applied a new technique known as sfumato, which involves the definition of form without abrupt outline by delicate gradation from light to shadow. Leonardo knew that the expression of a human face rests in two features, the corners of the mouth and the corners of the eyes. He deliberately left these parts indistinct by letting them merge into a soft shadow. This is how he created the Mona Lisa's enigmatic smile. At this time, Leonardo came across a textbook on dissection. The author was Mondino de Luzzi, an anatomist who taught in Bologna in the early 14th century. In 1302, lawyers at the University of Bologna had enforced an autopsy because they suspected that the deceased had been poisoned. It was the first case in the history of forensic medicine and the beginning of modern anatomy but it took another 200 years for anatomical research to become firmly established at universities. In 1503, Leonardo learnt that regular autopsies were being carried out at the Santa Maria Nueva Hospital in Florence. The corpses were those of executed criminals who were denied burial and were of no interest to anyone. Leonardo received permission to dissect them. In the years that followed, he cut up more than 30 corpses in order to make a systematic study of the body parts. Leonardo exposed organs, muscles and bones, drawing them from different angles for documentary purposes. He was particularly fascinated by the corpse of a man who hadn't been executed, but had died peacefully aged 100 and had agreed to make his body available for dissection. Leonardo followed Modino's technique by commencing with the abdominal wall, exposing the gastrointestinal tract first, and then progressing to the internal organs. Every step was recorded with a drawing pen. He discovered previously unknown details like the appendix. At the same time, Leonardo constantly improved his drawing technique, always striving to portray reality as accurately as possible. He used shading to make his drawings as three-dimensional as possible. Leonardo tried to express different observations in one drawing. His aim was to depict typical features, not accidental forms. He was the first anatomist to produce detailed, true-to-life drawings of the spine. 
faithfully reproducing both the curvature and the number of vertebrae. But Leonardo wasn't a physician, and in the end, the hospital withdrew its permission for him to dissect corpses. He was forced to continue his anatomical research on animals. Studying a pig's heart, he noticed that, contrary to the traditional view, the heart is a muscle, much more powerful than other muscles. Like them, it is fed by arteries. Despite his comprehensive findings, even after his death, Leonardo's sketches received little attention. Indeed, hundreds of years passed before his anatomical work was published and became world famous. Leonardo da Vinci was not the father of modern anatomy, but he did establish its basic principles. One person who benefited from this was the Flemish physician Andreas Fazal, also known as Fazalius, who in 1542 wrote medical history with his book on the fabric of the human body. As professor of surgery at the University of Padua, Fazal was able to dissect hundreds of corpses of executed criminals over many years and thus make a systematic study of the entire human body. But there was one skill that Fazal lacked, he couldn't draw so he engaged the services of famous artists like Titian and his pupil Stefan Kalkar, who produced hundreds of drawings for his anatomical textbook. In 1595, the first anatomy theatre was opened at the University of Padua. Anatomical research thus emerged from the gloom of cellar vaults into the bright light of modern science. But that didn't happen during Leonardo's lifetime. In 1516, he moved to Amboise in France, where he spent his declining years. What fascinated him now was the transitoriness of life described the nature of time, he wrote, as distinguished from the geometrical definitions. He compared the cycle of life to a candle. In dying, it changes from a brilliant light into a murky smoke. This, too, is how the centenarian had died. But exactly what was the cause of his death? Leonardo noticed that in youth our arteries are smooth and elastic, but as we get older, the arterial wall thickens and hardens. He thus became the first person to describe arteriosclerosis. Leonardo da Vinci is perhaps the only person in history whom the propensity for scientific research and artistic creativity attained such perfection. In Amboise, in 1519, Leonardo succumbed to the disease he'd studied so conscientiously in his declining years. He died of arteriosclerosis. <laughs>